Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Dubs Nation. Real quick, do me a favor. I'm trying to grow the channel, so subscribe. And if you agree, more importantly, I think it's time for us to get our message out as much, and if not more, than the left does. The left is constantly barraging us with their message on social media, in the media, with all their power and influence. It's time for us to start flooding our message in there. So what I more care about most is getting the message out so please like and share well last night we had night two of the rnc and it was another good night it wasn't overly exciting but the ratings the c-span ratings at least got six times more viewers than anything the dnc had uh i'm sure it did well uh there were a few honorable mentions for the speeches the same thing production value is excellent excellent as you I've been saying, I'm impressed with it, anything much better than the DNC had. And that's just the, the objective truth. Honestly, you look at it and it's just better done. That's the way, that's the way it is. Uh, but there's a few good honorable mentions. Uh, Eric Trump, I thought, had a good speech. And President Trump came out and he pardoned a former prisoner and a felon who had turned his life around. And now he runs a re-entry program and um, a recovery program for uh, other prisoners with the help of the FBI agent that arrested him. And it just made for good TV. So that was really good to see. Um, but the best of the night, which they had definitely saved, they definitely saved the best for the last, was our first lady, Melania Trump. I have to say, she is by far the best first lady that obviously is in my lifetime. I think she may be one of the best if not the best we've ever had. She's elegant, she's intelligent, she's beautiful, she well, speaks five, six languages, and she is just a nice, truly caring person. You get that vibe from her. And her speech literally dunked on Michelle Obama's divisive speech, and then she nicely and poli politely helped her over to the bench and sat her down and told her to have a good night. That's how, based, how the speech went, basically. It was hopeful, it was uplifting, it was humble, it was supportive of the president, and it was supportive of everything that they are working towards and the whole agenda, and it just brought everything together. And not only that, she took the high road too, as the, Michelle Obama always likes to claim she does, but doesn't. She took the high road, didn't attack, do any attacks. She called for unity. She touched on every subject, COVID. She, um, what I was really happy about is she actually spoke about the drug epidemic too that's been getting glossed over throughout the entire COVID epidemic. And she wrapped everything up nicely in the package and finished it off perfectly. She did a great job. Uh, that did not stop the media, however, and Hollywood shitbags from attacking her uh bet i'm sure a lot of you saw bet midler had to make fun of her accent and the fact that she can't even speak english or whatever she was trying to say i mean this like this this pig actually thinks anybody gives a damn what her opinion is let alone we do thinks that we we believe that she is speaking from any kind of um reality that the rest of us live in she's in another bubble by herself but that's fine now, the other speaker that I was really, um, I was waiting to see was Nick Sandman, the Covington Catholic kid. A lot of you, I'm sure, all remember what happened to him. He was badly defamed by the media, just a kid for wearing a MAGA hat and having that whole thing with the Native American guy banging the drum in his face, and they twisted it and just didn't give a damn if he became a casualty of their narrative or not. And he got death threats. His school had to close down. They were going to uh, maybe suspend or expel them. There was a whole ordeal. And it turned out to be legitimately 100% false, not even a shred of truth to it. And the media, had they done a little bit of checking for the full video, which any one of us found in five minutes, they would have known that that was BS, but they didn't care. They, they wanted that to be the case. They wanted it to be the case so badly that they were willing to just ignore everything else. And what I like about it is that he was actually to, able to deal a significant blow to the fake news media 
by winning in court and slapping them and forcing them to pay him money for upending his life like that. You know, he's he's a kid. He, he didn't deserve that anyway. That didn't. You would think the media would learn their lesson after this and not only stop attacking kids, but try to be more objective and do their actual job instead of just being a bunch of political hacks. But nope, CNN analyst mocks Sandman speaking at RNC. Snot nosed kid. On Tuesday night, as Nick Sandman, the Kentucky student from Covington Catholic High School, spoke at the Republican National Convention, former Bill Clinton press secretary and current CNN analyst Joe Lockhart took a shot at him, calling Sandman a snot-nosed entitled kid. Lockhart tweeted, I'm watching tonight because it's important, but I don't have to watch this snot-nosed entitled kid from Kentucky. I guess they just will never learn. I guess they won't. And that's why it's important that we flood our message out there and win over as many people that are still apolitical or willing to challenge their views as possible. All right. So now I would be um, remiss if I did not speak to all the craziness that's happening right now in Kenosha, in Seattle, in Portland, and basically everywhere, and almost at most, many major cities at least, because for me personally, there was the Ferguson riots and the Michael Brown incident that really opened my eyes completely. I was already on my way there, but it opened my eyes completely because as many of you might remember, I'm sitting there watching the media outlets and, and news anchors sit there with their hands up like this, like f furthering this na narrative, like forcefully furthering in this narrative that Michael Brown was just minding his own business and this cop stopped him and Michael Brown got on his knees, put his hands in the air and he was begging for his life and he was complying and he was not doing anything wrong and the cop executed him at point blank range like this was some kind of crazy movie or something. And I'm like, there's no damn way that that is the story. That cannot be. Like, we, Why aren't we waiting to see what the hell has happened? Get some eyewitness accounts. Get more. Get to, get the pol police reports. See if we can get anything. A uh, traffic camera. I don't know. Whatever. We got to wait. And they was, there was no waiting. So now here we are. And we found out from the Obama DOJ that, that Darren Wilson was justified in shooting Michael Brown because Michael Brown had just robbed the convenience store, strong arm robbery, and he was physically attacked Darren Wilson, tried to steal his gun, grab, phys physically reached into the car, tried to steal his gun, and then the shooting occurred. So you would think that after that and all the riots that were taking place back then, were happening. I remember, there was another one in Milwaukee. It was actually a black officer that shot another black man, and it was confirmed pretty quickly that that guy had a gun. But that didn't matter. The riots still took place in Milwaukee. You would think that after all of that, that everybody, not just the media, media, but everybody, would say, "Well, wait a minute. We really need to take a step back and just kind of see what is happening here. See what." the facts are and what transpired in each incident because this is the 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 joke of it all that these people the black lives matter and the media and democrats the yeah, democrats don't care about anything they just pander to whatever the the trend of the day is so but you would think that after all that they would adopt this let's Let's let cooler heads prevail. Let's take a step back and wait. Okay. No. What has been transpiring? Well, first of all, this is, stuff like this has been going on for God knows how long. And some of you may have already seen it. But I it was just so infuriating to me that I had to I had to go over it. The massive crowd of people uh, Black Lives Matter protesters surrounded patrons at a restaurant that were dining outside and getting in their face and forcing them by threat of violence to raise their fist in uh, solidarity or whatever the case was. And there was this one woman that wouldn't do it because 
who the hell wants to be bullied into doing any of that nonsense? Nobody. So this is what has been happening across the country. Stuff like this. Look at these people getting in her face, mostly white. They talk about entitled snot-nosed kids. These are the prime example of them. Look at these scumbags. So that's just, just one of many examples of absurdity happening across the country because of the media, because of the Democrats. Look at this. Look at this. I don't see anybody worried about COVID there. Oh my God. Look at this. Anyway, this is just one of the many. Okay. Now, remember when Jerry Nadler, the uh, House of Representatives resident amorphous blob, said that the riots in Portland were a myth, they weren't actually happening? Well, not only are they still happening, and now the Portland uh, Democrat leaders are, now they're starting to get a little worried, and they're trying to say, oh, wait, we got to stop this violence now. Still happening. Same with Seattle. This is just disgusting. Rioters tried to burn Seattle police alive, sealed door during a fire at East Precinct. So there you see... They actually tried to use quick dry concrete, and um, you may have seen this story as well, sealed the door and then start a fire in the building to burn cops alive. Are, are, people not, are people not grasping the gravity and the reality of this? Even if it was a half-assed attempt, that was still an attempt. This needs to be squashed, I man. This has to be crushed, and the Democrats of the states are refusing. They're pandering for votes. I've never seen something so disgusting in my life, and mark my words, this will push Trump over the top. It has to. Nobody wants this. Nobody. I can promise you, you think those people at the restaurant wanted to be forced to raise their fit, even if they were hardcore leftists? No. No, nobody likes that crap. Okay, this has to be crushed. This has to be stopped. This is sickening. So that brings us to what's happening now. Okay, what's happening in Kenosha is just beyond crazy. It's this, this has been happening since George Floyd, and as usual. There was more to the stories of everything. And the narrative perpetrated by the media was it, which is responsible for this, responsible for the carnage, was nowhere near the truth. Um, this is a video of cops in Kenosha getting assaulted. Right there. I don't know what the cop got hit with. He got hit with something, maybe a brick, and got knocked out. I cannot tell you how irritating this is to see this. Police. Longer clip of the incident in Kenosha involving Molotov cocktails. Hey, 
The police are trying to leave Kenosha, but they're not letting them. So, he used the Molotov cocktail to distract him and then blasted him in the back of the head. He's pigs, these scumbag people, I swear to God. And what's even more infuriating is the Democrats are encouraging this. They're saying it's okay because somehow the all the police departments, all the various the police departments across this country are intertwined in this spider web of racist behavior, according to them. They all get together and they plot and plan to go hunt down African-American men when that just is the most absurd thing I've ever heard in my life. Not taking a step back and saying, okay, well, the sad reality of, of the country today is that uh, the vast majority of violent crimes are committed by black males. 50% of homicides and 60% of, of robberies are committed by black males. So police officers don't randomly interact with people just for no reason. They don't. I, they don't. They, they go where the calls are. Most of the police interactions are from 911 calls when crimes are being committed. Okay, so real quick, I just want to go over the three of the most recent police incidents, shootings, deaths, um, and break them down and show and see how the, they have morphed from the original narrative to the actual fact pattern now. And I'll give some quick thoughts on them too. So stick with me guys real quick and we'll go through this and we'll see how it's changed. Now, George Floyd. Um, George Floyd is uh, was a unique situation because that one is was just so visibly um, upsetting. And what it was, it was just it was hard to watch because we watched the man die, and you see this cop kneeling on his neck, and it's it's just you you got the whole thing there at once, and it just wasn't wasn't good. Um, but e and so even then, the narrative completely this still has changed. It, 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 the actual fact pattern has changed from the narrative. And we're going to see that new documents in the George Floyd case. To describe how Andrew Baker, the Hennepin County chief medical examiner, addressed the level of fentanyl in Floyd's blood but they present his view in somewhat different ways. They are relevant to a theory which Floyd overdosed on fentanyl and would have died if no one had kneeled on him. Baker's office ultimately ruled the death a homicide. So basically, the level of fentanyl that was in his blood, along with other narcotics, along with other drugs, which were included amphetamine, I believe, and some other stuff, what would have, according to the medical medical examiner, killed Floyd? Could have killed him anyway. Now, that they're saying that that that, that is what that is what killed him. This case, so that that completely at least destroys the narrative that um, Chauvin maliciously knelt on his neck and strangled him, but. Having the knowledge of police procedure and police action and training that I do, regardless of whether the knee on the neck was or was not the cause of death, it is still a police officer's duty to protect and render aid to anybody that is in their custody. So clearly by seeing Chauvin's actions, it explains what more explains what what is happening and what is going on but he didn't help he didn't render aid the guy he didn't even 
realized that he had stopped breathing and turned him over and started chest compressions or anything like that. So in this case, it's going to be real difficult after this comes out to get murdered too on Chauvin. But either way, he didn't assist. He, he neglected his duty there and he committed crime. So in that case, the Chauvin is guilty of a crime. Murder too? Probably not. Manslaughter? Maybe, maybe not. More likely it would be assault because he knelt on his neck and assassinated. Maybe manslaughter. I'm not a, a law professor. I'm not a law student or anything like that. I have taken some pre-law, but it all depends on each state's um, murder chart, you know, it's murder laws. So it, it's going to be tough considering that you have to show intent for murder too. So this doesn't, this, Chauvin did not, um, he may have exacerbated this, but to say that he willfully murdered Floyd because he was black, there's just no fact pattern for that. So we had, I don't know how many days, we're still having riots because of that narrative. Let's move on to the next one. Breonna Taylor. Breonna Taylor, I'll, I'll be honest, when that first happened, I did not know much about it. And I was getting information like the cops went to the wrong house and just started shooting through the door and for no reason and killed, killed her. And I was like, oh my God. But obviously knowing what I do, no, I said, that can't necessarily be the entire story. Let's wait. So what happened was today, um, the Courier Journal, which is a local um, newspaper in Louisville, put out some recent f some findings that explained that Breonna Taylor did have a much more in-depth relationship than the target of that sting slash drug investigation than they originally thought she was uh allowing him to receive u.s postal service packages at her house and there's there's uh confirmation that this dude was taking packages out of brianna taylor's house and then bringing them to a known drug house so there's involvement there i mean there is serious involvement so what what happened was they had a warrant and this is still under dispute but what happened was they the cops had a no-knock warrant which is in place for their own safety when they're going into a, to a high danger um, bust. And they didn't get any, they, they said they knocked anyway. So that is what's in dispute. They knocked anyway several, several times. And the boyfriend actually fired through the door, uh, excuse me, as the cops entered, that he fired at the cops first, striking the sergeant in the leg after the sergeant was struck in the leg, that's when the officers returned fire, striking the boyfriend of Breonna Taylor and Breonna Taylor, who was standing right next to him. Now, the question was, well, why were the cops there? Well, they had a warrant based on the relationship of the boyfriend and her with this other drug guy and the fact that there's drugs being, possibly drugs being sent to her residence. So how is this some kind of racist shooting? Okay, sounds like a tragedy. It definitely is a tragedy, and it's awful that she was killed. All these things are tragedies. People, we don't. Nobody likes to see when anybody is shot and killed. But to go from uh, what we just, heard, what I just laid out here, these fact pat, the, the facts here from that the Courier Journal gave us, to the cops just went to the wrong house and just started shooting guns blazing through the door killing this girl while she's in her sleep cozy cozy in her bed is just so evil it is so evil and look louisville mayor greg fisher was so upset that the courier journal actually put this information out that the editor took it down he took the damn thing down unbelievable louisville mayor Greg Fisher described the article linked to the Breonna Taylor case that was published briefly on the Courier Journal's website on Tuesday as reckless in an unsolicited statement sent to news 
Media Tuesday morning. The Courier Journal's report cited an undated report prepared by the LNPD after the shooting and the phone records from calls Glover and others made in jail. It is not clear how the Courier Journal obtained the report or other materials referenced in the article. The attorney's the Attorney General's investigation into the shooting is still ongoing and LMPD has refused to release documents from this case, a decision the newspaper has sued over. So you can't even, I, I couldn't even find the actual article anymore because I guess they took it down. But the article laid out the connection that Breonna Taylor and her boyfriend had to the to the drug house and the, the drug kingpin of that sting. And now they're upset because they think it's defaming her character. It's not, how is it defaming her character? It's relevant to the reason why the cops were there. You're claiming that the cops weren't even supposed to be there. They're not supposed to have this no-knock warrant, but they're releasing information showing why the warrant was there. So now the, the people are all up and all, oh, why aren't these cops arrested yet? Because you jackasses, we don't know all the facts of the case. That's why. Now look, with the, they're showing reason for the cops being there. The fact that she was killed was awful. Okay, but it's understandable from a reasonable perspective, reasonable perspective, because her boyfriend shot at them first. What do you expect them to do? Go, oh, man down. Okay, just put that gun down. Don't shoot at us again. No, man, they're going to they're going to return fire and protect themselves. Okay, and it was uh, it's just uh, there's sometimes unfortunate events happen. Does that mean that they were um seeking them out because they were black and killed them no no it does not we don't know we, you can't make that assumption until you get the facts of, of each individual case most recent one and the cause for the riots in kenosha jacob blake now the original narrative for this one was that <clears throat> jacob blake was just stopping was, I guess he was driving by and he or was in the area of a domestic dispute and he stopped to be a good Samaritan and just separate this fight between these two people. Or the, the two, I don't know, whoever they were. <clears throat> that was, and he had no prior criminal record and there was nothing to worry about and the cops just, and, and all of a sudden that's where the video picks up is you see the cops chasing him with the gun and he's just ignoring him and he goes to, into his car and they shoot him in the back seven times and they did that because he was black and they there was no other reason for them to do that and they were that was it how could you possibly take that on its face with that small clip so after that another video surfaced showing the more of the interaction between the police and Jacob Taylor. As you can see, there's a big wrestling match that's going on over there on the other side of the car. Okay, look, so there's a wrestling match that was happening between the cops and Taylor over here on the floor. He somehow is able to, let's go back. So he's somehow able to get up and break free from the police over here. Mom, get back. Mom. They're obviously Mom. ordering him to stop. They have him at gunpoint. They're telling this guy to stop. Now, We'll get into exactly what the eyewitness account said after that. Mom, mom, you have to get back. There, and we're going to. So. That was the, that was it. That's all. First part, the, the video on the right was all that we had originally. And then we told the Good Samaritan thing, and that was it. No, his attorney came out and said there was no um, prior priors. And here's the thing on the priors. They, priors do matter. Not in every case, okay? The fact that, um, you know, say, for example, George Floyd, he they were called there for a counterfeit $20 bill. 
the fact that he had gone to prison for other things in the past to right there that those the priors don't matter and the priors did not don't justify death at all or anything like that but in a case like this priors do matter okay if he has priors for being violent with police especially okay if he has um active warrants if he has if he's known to carry weapons police need that information and they use that to prep themselves to get ready to know what they're going into so they don't get killed themselves okay so let's go over exactly what the truth is about jacob blake turns out jacob blake did have an outstanding warrant multiple outstanding warrants at the time he had an outstanding warrant for sexual assault. For sexual assault, uh, Jacob Blake had an outstanding, war uh, outstanding arrest warrant for sexual assault, trespassing, and disorderly conduct in connection with domestic abuse. Police were responding to a domestic incident at a home in the area when Blake was shot. Though, nature of the dispute is unclear. Although, viral video showed cops shooting Blake while reaching for, for something in the car, Another video from a different angle showed him brawling with the cops on the pavement. In 2015, Jacob Blake was charged with resisting arrest, causing a soft tissue injury to a police officer while pulling a gun at a bar for which he was facing up to eight and a half years in prison. Okay. So he did have priors. Now, let's go down to... Let's go down to this here. Jacob Blake charged with sexual assault issued arrest warrant. Okay. So right there, the police have an obligation. He was not, there wasn't an arrest warrant for uh, a traffic violation. That's sexual assault. If you just let somebody go, that had an active warrant for sexual assault and they could and the police let them go and they commit another crime like that then the police are, can be liable you just allowed that another crime to happen needlessly okay online court records indicate kenosha county prosecutors charged blake on july 6 with sexual assault trespassing disorderly conduct in connection with domestic abuse Jacob Blake faced up to eight and a half years in prison. We already know that. According to the criminal complaint, Blake and two women were at the Brass Monkey Tavern when Blake got into an argument with another patron and pulled the black handgun right there, known to carry a gun. Blake pointed the gun at another man and the magazine fell to the floor. The bartender told Blake to leave, and he did, but pointed the gun through the window at patrons inside the bar before walking south on Junction Avenue. Police conducted a high-risk traffic stop. Now, again, this is back in 2015. Police conducted a high-risk traffic stop. The complaint, the complaint reads, and ordered Blake to put his hands out the window of the vehicle. Instead, Blake exited the SUV and started walking towards officers and ignored commands to get down on the ground. <laughs> look familiar or sound familiar when blake refused to comply repeatedly canine dozer was deployed to force him into compliance so they sick the dog on him they had to sick the dog on this guy in their last encounter with him because he refused to listen to their commands after he had just pointed a gun at them at somebody okay this is relevant information it is i'm sorry but it is doesn't the fact that he he did that doesn't mean he deserved to die or anything like that Okay, but let's continue. At the time he was taken into custody, Blake was searched and police say he had a holster on his hip, but no gun. A subsequent search of the SUV turned up a black handgun on the floor behind the driver's seat. A box of ammunition was also found and two loaded magazines were discovered in Blake's coat. Okay, now... I, it also just came out that they released the police scanner audio. 
basically they got the, the audio from what was heard by the police officers as they were arriving on the scene or on the way to the scene. They knew the it was Jacob Blake. They knew his name. They knew he had active warrants for his arrest. And they knew all this information that I just laid out for you. Okay. Here we go. Is this is this painting a little bit different of a picture now? Was he just a good Samaritan? No. Okay, now we still don't know. There was um, one more account that he uh, that he had a gun, or excuse me, that he had a knife in his hand because the one of the eyewitnesses was heard the, heard the cops screaming, drop the knife, drop the knife, drop the knife. So if that's the case, that's just, just another uh, reason for using lethal force. The fact that somebody is shot in the back means that doesn't always mean that this was a bad shoot. It, it, we still don't know if it was or wasn't even. And I'll say that because we still don't have the totality of the circumstances, even though we're getting more of the picture now and it's looking more like it may be a justified, but we don't know that yet. We still don't. The other things come out. So you would think that these people would wait and say, let's wait, calm down. Let's just, let's wait. No. So Jacob Blake was not listening. They thought that uh, the eyewitness has heard them saying, drop the knife, and he, you saw him forcefully break free and not listen to the commands and stomp over to his car as they're holding him at gunpoint. Now, I'm hearing, how could they do that in front of his kids? He had his kids in the car. How could they do that in front of his kids? How could they do that? For, for... Listen, I got kids. If you are behaving like that with your kids in the car, you're a piece of garbage, man. You're putting your kids at risk. Your actions are putting the kids at risk, not the police. The police are called there because of something that's happening that you're involved with. You, the, the, he, that, you, your actions are putting your kids at risk. So this whole other narrative with the kids is just, I, it, this is beyond disgusting. And this has to be smashed. It has to be squashed. We have to stop this because this is, bur people are burning down cities and hurting and killing people now because of the subsequent riots and it's just snowballing even worse. Democrat leaders don't want to take federal help. They don't want to, they, they want to encourage the riots. You got good people like Sean King wanting to dox the cops uh, because he's a piece of garbage. The difference in the original narrative that the media promulgates versus the actual fact pattern that transpires that comes out later is wildly different. And it, causing mayhem, destruction, division, and riots, and people actually being hurt, and people actually being killed, and it's tearing the country apart. Now, <clears throat> CNN and the media that have been f throwing gas on the fire fires like this for the past five plus years are starting to realize now that uh, something is hurting them, and something is going on, and they maybe need to address it. CNN's Don Lemon says Kenosha violence hurts Democrats. The rioting has to stop. Why? Did he just have a sudden strike of morality? Did a lightning bolt come out of the sky and strike him in the head? And now he is suddenly thinks normally and rationally and has entered our reality? No. He's only worried about it because he believes it is hurting the Democrats' chances to win an election. That's the only reason why he's worried about it, just because he wants them to win an election. CNN host, CNN host Don Lemon declared Tuesday night that now deadly riots in Kenosha have to stop in 2020, if 2020 Democratic nominee Joe Biden wants to defeat President Trump on Election Day. The rioting has to stop, Lemon said. It's showing up in the polling. It's showing up in the focus groups. It is the only thing that is sticking right now. What did I say in one of my other videos, the Democrat, I said Democrats are the party of focus groups. What does that tell you right there? They only, they are panderers times 10. They only go whichever the way the wind blows. No morals of their own, no values of their own, no set policies. They're wind vanes. Point that direction one day, point this direction another day. That prompted, just that happened last night, and just so happens that after 90 days of straight riots in different various locations in 
the entire country, that prompted Joe Biden to make a statement. But now here he is. Sick. Once again, a black man, Jacob Blake, has been shot by the police in broad daylight with the whole world watching. You know, I spoke to Jacob's mom and dad, sister, and other members of the family just a little bit earlier. And I told them justice must and will be done. You know, our hearts are with his family, especially his children. It's horrible what they saw. Watching their father get shot. Like Gianna Floyd, they're asking why. Why daddy? Put yourself in the shoes of every black father and black mother in this country and ask, is this what we want America to be? Is this the country we should be? You know, as I said after George Floyd's murder, protesting brutality is a right and absolutely necessary. But burning down communities is not protest. It's needless violence. Violence that endangers lives. Violence that guts businesses and shutters businesses and serves the community. That's wrong. In the midst of this pain, the wisest words that I've heard spoken so far have come from Julia Jackson, Jacob's mother. She looked at the damage done in her community and she said this, quote, this doesn't reflect my son or my family. So let's unite and heal, do justice, end the violence, and end systemic racism in this country now. End systemic racism now. What a, what a despicable statement just like every other democrat that spoke that put out a statement today what a despicable statement and systemic racism now the the systemic racism that uh, something that literally can't be defined so they have everybody chasing their damn tail trying to figure out what they have to do or what it is to, to, to how they could fix this but it's not it's un, something that's unfixable because it's not there it's not systemic racism of course there is racism in the country there are racist people but it, systemic racism means is just the system is actually has has racist policies that keep people down based on their skin color and it's not happening sorry joe you're about 90 days too late with this statement i don't know where the hell you were when 30 other people were killed during the other riots and like 900 cops had been injured during the during the riots from portland i thought they were a myth i thought the riots had been a myth now he wants it to stop so only because of the polling numbers guys i know this is a long one thank you for sticking with me like share subscribe and i'll have some more tomorrow